Welcome to Fox TV News, where everything is true. JN Bank warns public of fake Instagram accounts. Jamaica National Bank is imploring the public to be on the lookout for what it says are several fake Instagram accounts that have copied the look and feel of the official JN Bank account on the platform. The bank in a statement Sunday evening said some of these fake accounts have reposted some of its original posts and have been reaching out to persons to solicit banking details as well as attempting to redirect them to a website link. These activities have been reported to Instagram and we continue to inform all our users of the threat. Please be advised that JN operates one official account on Instagram that can be found at handle at JN Bank Limited. Any account that appears with any variation of the official handle should be deemed fake and immediately reported and blocked the statement advised. It also stated that JN Bank will never request sensitive personal information such as online banking password via direct messages or email. Tears flow at stats for murdered footballer. A somber mood permeated at the air at the St. Andrew Technical High School on Monday as classmates and friends of Omar Lang mourned the shooting death of the promising footballer. Omar was fatally shot in a drive-by on Charles Street in West Kingston on Friday, April 22nd. He was celebrating his 18th birthday when he was shot. Omar's grief-stricken colleagues and football teammates openly wept on the school compound. Monday morning, while being consoled by visiting members of the Jamaica Constabulary Force, JCF, Inspector Tanisa Johnson, National Safe Schools Unit Coordinator, promised to find those responsible for his killing. Footballers, as I said, there is not any amount of words to console you, but the Jamaica Constabulary Force, we pledge that we will put out all stops, we will stop at nothing at all, and this is not just talking to ensure that those who are involved in the killing of young Omar will be brought to justice, Johnson stated. That's a promise, and we will be delivering on that promise. And just as how we come now to try and console you, because we have to, you are hurting, we will be back here in short order to deliver the message that we have them. You can depend on us, she added. Mr. Williams, a teacher at the school, also remembered the promising football star as a leader and trendsetter who was interested in learning. When I observed him sitting with the footballers, even when they were discussing some things that weren't so right or seen some words, I could never see Omar taking part. He was just sitting there calmly on his phone or just observing that's Omar, someone of peace. Yes, we are going to miss him, but we have to be strong for each other, Mr. Williams stated. Omar was also the leading goal scorer for St. Andrew Technical High School last year during the ISA Digicel Manning Cup competition. 50-year-old man murdered in St. Andrew home. A 50-year-old St. Andrew man was murdered in his Stone Hill home by unknown assailants on Sunday. He has been identified as Larissa Harrison, otherwise called Larry, a teller of Brooks Level Road, Stony Hill, St. Andrew. Reports from the Constant Spring Police are that about 8.50 p.m., Harrison was inside his house when he was pounced upon by a gunman who opened fire hitting him. The police were alerted and he was taken to hospital where he was pronounced dead. The police are investigating. Delivery man shot dead while demolishing house. A 30-year-old delivery man who was among a group of people demolishing a house in Denham Town, was shot dead by a gunman on West Road, Kingston 12 on Sunday. The deceased has been identified as Demar Foote, otherwise called Carlos of Denham Town address. Reports from the Denham Town Police are that about 5.50 p.m., Foote was among a group of people demolishing a house when he was pounced upon by a lone gunman who opened fire hitting him. The police were alerted and he was taken to hospital where he was pronounced dead. The other persons escaped unhurt. Investigations are ongoing. Person of interest interrogated in ATM explosion. Cop sees another being sought. The person said they have already interrogated one person of interest and are seeking another in connection with Saturday's explosion at Scotia Bank in Port Antonio, Portland. At the same time, the police say an audit is being done to determine how much money was taken. We have various stakeholders involved in the investigations actively pursuing some leads. We already have one person of interest. That person already been interviewed 
and were seeking one other person of interest, Glenn Martin, acting assistant commissioner of police in charge of crime, stated. Acting ACP Marge said it is still early days into the investigations, but based on the space, he is optimistic that a breakthrough will be made shortly. What I can tell the public is that it is an act of arson and investigations are proceeding along that line. We are still putting together some pieces and seeking additional clues that are coming slowly, but we are optimistic that it is a one-off case of arson, he added. He said the police cannot say definitely the amount of money that has been taken. An audit is currently being carried out, he further stated. A security guard who was injured in the explosion is still being questioned by the police. A section of the Scotia Bank, which houses two ATM machines, were destroyed in the explosion heard at approximately 4.10 a.m. on Saturday. On arrival, officers observed fire and smoke coming from the front of the building. Further investigations reveal that the two ATMs were also destroyed during the explosion. Brown Burke publishes PM's claim of likely need to import labor. Opposition spokesperson on education and training, Dr. Angela Brown Burke, is blasting Prime Minister Andrew Holness for stating that workers might have to be imported into Jamaica to fill the demands of expected job vacancies. According to Brown Burke, the statement from Holness is astounding as the Prime Minister is the Portfolio Minister for the Training Institute, Human Employment and Resource Training, National Service Training Agency, Heart and STA, as well as the Housing Opportunity, Production and Employment Hope Program. Speaking at the groundbreaking ceremony at the Ray Hotel in Trelawney on Wednesday, Holness said Jamaica could be forced to import skilled workers as the country is facing a shortage of skilled workers, specifically within the construction sector. Brown Burke, however, rebut Holness claimed, I am flabbergasted. I am amazed that the Prime Minister could allow those words to come out of his mouth. I don't even understand what he could mean that he is putting anybody on notice. And if we are not able to provide these workers, then he will just have to import workers. I believe that the Prime Minister forgets that he has responsibility for these issues. He is also the Minister with responsibility for the Heart NSTA, and what that means is in as much as for the last two years, he has been talking so globally about the whole program and all that is being done, and has been done under the whole program in terms of training, in terms of job, work experience, and so on, that is a glorious opportunity, said Brown Burke in response. She was critical of the government's planning, stating that the skill set and where these will be ascertained must be included in the needs of development. She said this is the responsibility of the government to ensure that the needed workers are in place. According to Brownberg, the island should have the necessary workers already, and she said many Jamaicans have already been through HOT and STA and are waiting on their certificates. Brownberg said thousands of individuals are also waiting to be trained by the government agency, while others already possess the skill set that are needed, but need an apprenticeship or testing program to be certified. I believe that this is a glorious opportunity for the government to show that they represent the youth of this country and they understand the importance of making sure that the youngsters are trained, certified and qualified to meet the labor market needs and upcoming developments and the needs that are there. We have individuals in this country who are not begging but are looking for an opportunity to work. I am not sure what are the skill sets wholeness is talking about. I assume that some of this is going to be some sort of temporary workers in construction. One also would assume that we are going to have needs for individuals with higher skills in the actual companies themselves, whether they are hotels or other companies, enterprises that are going to be here, she said. Brownberg called on the government to act now to prevent those who are at or leaving university from migrating to seek job opportunities while also implementing a community-based and workforce-type training program to get Jamaicans certified and integrated into the companies that are now opening nationally. Prime Minister Andrew Holness stated that they are currently undertaking the process of debating the new firearms legislation, the outcome of which is to ensure that there is a far better regulated space for the private ownership of firearms. He further stated that he was signaling the Jamaican public 
that the new Firearms Act will harshly punish anyone found with an illegal gun. There is a residual fear, I detect, in legal firearm holders, a fear of the new firearms bill in Parliament. You know, we take for granted the country that we live in. That country is a democracy. And how does a democracy work? The laws that will bind us are not given by dictate. And you will see that even in the political organization that I lead, we are not monolithic in views. Meaning that there is a diversity of perspective. And that diversity contends. And then at the end of it, we come to an understanding. So we are going through that process of debating the new firearms legislation. And Senator Golding pointed out a perspective. The Minister of National Security pointed out another perspective. The JRA itself has submitted a perspective to the committee considering the new legislation. All of the views are going to contend. What will be the outcome that I am foreseeing? The outcome I am foreseeing will be a far better regulated space for the private ownership of firearms. It will be a space where the people who own firearms are certified, both technically and in terms of fit and proper, meaning that they have established a need for the firearm and they have established that they are responsible and that their track record has been one of good upstanding upholders of the law and public order. And that is what all of us here gathered would want to see. It is not a system that is going to be exclusive, meaning that only persons of certain income or certain social backgrounds will be able to legally access firearms. No, we want to have an open, transparent process that once you meet those standards, you will be able to legal. The challenge that we are facing is that there are many persons in our country who see it fit to illegally acquire a firearm. Now, the only thing we can assume when someone illegally acquires a firearm is that they intend to use it for an illegal purpose. And so the country must come down heavily on that. There can be no ambivalence in our perspective that anyone who has an illegal firearm should be punished in the harshest possible way. And until the society is clear on that, that there is no excuse for gunmen, this problem will persist. We need our law enforcement and our judicial system to be very clear and very firm on persons who seek to acquire and use a legal weapon. And so my presence, as I said here today, is to send a clear signal to the country that the new firearms legislation will, one, promote and support the legal usage of firearms. It will promote the various sporting competitions that exist around the use of firearms. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, and click the notification bell for daily updates.